Welcome to Wickerson Studios again. I am beginning a new video series that's going to deal in uh, Rhinoceros 3D modeling program and Grasshopper's plugin that's associated with that and all of the wonderful um, plugins that work with Grasshopper. Uh, this is a beginning introductory and informational video on why you would want to move into a program like this as opposed to continuing to work with the Tinkercad uh, code blocks and hopefully I can demonstrate that. Right now I have some images and renderings that I've pulled all out of Grasshopper files which are parametric scripted node network files that run left to right for Rhinoceros 3D. You can work from geometries and lines and surfaces in, in Rhino and import those into your script or you can just go blind which I refer to as kind of naked coding in a sense that you don't have any need for anything in the Rhino window that you can begin right with the node network in Grasshopper and generate your forms. Uh, these are some objects that have been created. I put them on ArtStation because I find they're a little different than the average works that are there. Nothing here is coming out of Tinkercad except for I think the import of this mesh of these wheelbarrows which I'd showed in a past video. But uh, exciting things to see what can happen there. And what I'll show you is that window itself in Rhino is uh, pairs a Grasshopper uh, node network system over here with the viewports that come out of Rhino. I'm not going to teach an introductory interface of Rhino. You can kind of pick up on some skills, but you're going to have to spend the hours online tutorials to learn the basics of not only Rhino and Grasshopper. My goal is to show geometries and show how those scripts generate those geometries in an interesting way in order to get people to do new and different things. I will use some interesting um, physics simulations, robotic simulations, and augmented reality uh, plugins, which might be very interesting. Uh, when you go into Grasshopper, you'll see I have a lot more plugins here on the top than you'll have when you open. This is parameters, maths, sets, vectors, curves, surfaces, meshes, um, and then it, it continues for uh, transformations and um oh what is that one that was the uh yeah the intersect tools uh basically it's an interesting thing that i have already baked in my final form which is over here in the grasshopper script but there's a critical point looking at this and i'm going to talk about that in a minute uh if i jump in you can see the difference between what you're getting out of tinkercad and what you can end up getting in renders out of models that have been piped variably, dealing with NURBS curves, not dealing with meshes, and they make for some pretty incredible uh, surfaces. Grotesque if you find them, that's fine as well. Um, but that said, we're leaving this idea of being on Tinkercad and running some very simple scripts, which I'll just put on here, uh, and, and dealing with the geometries I could make. This is a simple one that renders and starts to hit its max at 196. Uh, parameters and you can notice here that the chains being built uh, by different geometries it's uh, then being lofted uh, I think six times on top of the original and you basically have this set of uh, chain that you can then import into Rhino and take some different angles and try rendering that uh, you will have kind of a, a mesh structure coming out of Tinkercad which might not be what you want to do and you want some smoother curves that said, here's another example of a very simple script. Uh, it's a wheel, uh, not unlike anything we were looking at in the code block series. And uh, yeah, it'll run through that script. I think spokes divided by two because they're at diameter's length instead of radius. And boom, you're left with a wheel and I'll throw a little uh, torus around it. Um, and there you go. And that's a parametric wheel that will export in different ways. Not a lot of control. You'd have to go in and type up these variables differently every time you tried to render something different. And then here's another one that's just fairly uh, simple again, dealing with the idea of lumber, variable lumber coming in. And you can see we're at 182 out of the maximum 200 parameters. So it's time to leave this program and enter something that can go a little bigger. This will build a pretty interesting, I don't know, just a vessel or a framework for a ship. I call it a timber ship fold. 0002 version. You see I'm rotating it, doing things through loops now as opposed to just doing every piece and moving it. So I'm starting to become a little more savvy in the script. And like I said, I'm maxing out this uh, introductory program and I think it's time to move into another one. So when that's done, Rhinoceros 3D is definitely worth looking at. 
uh, getting yourself a student teacher three months uh, uh, license, which will last your lifetime and you can upgrade. You're going to realize Grasshopper goes right along with that algorithmic modeling for Rhino. All of its wonderful files and forum are on there. And then Food for Rhino are just sponsored apps and plugins that are absolutely incredible. And the best thing to look at here is go into the apps and realize you have an interest in some of these things as a profession down the side. And it gives a list of kind of the numbers of apps that service those. And they are incredible from, you know, jewelry to modeling to mathematics to marine uh, boat planning, uh, space, robotics. Uh, it's pretty incredible. And those all come, most of them, you can see, 108, uh, there's a trial version, but most of them are free at 736 plugins, and they continue to be made. So once again, start generating some easy scripts, uh, pull them in and start making your own particular geometries. The Morel is something I obsess about. This is all a series of Dungeon Dragon worlds I made when I was 17. So this is like 31 years ago. I'm starting to vision the world of Dutch Aim through Grasshopper apps for Rhino. So we're running. I don't want to run out of time, so I'm going to keep going. Uh, we're going to jump back into the script and show you how it kind of works. Uh, what's nice is you have an iteration here. If I put it over to something like wireframe, uh, you can see within the wireframe the object that I've baked. But with the parameters, as you go down to this side and bake from that object, you'll see I basically have the top of that tool, the bottom of that tool. And I think I'll just hide this geometry for now. Um, so you can see that I'm basically bringing in two geometries, manufacturing them, and then bringing them together. But what's critical here, and I want to make a main point of this, is I am interested in the creative artist that wants to begin before laying a point on paper. So this is the maths before actually bringing in a point and working parametrically on this side, building uh, domains, dealing in maths, dealing with uh, uh, cosine and sine curves, trigonometry, and going in and playing and realizing that if I have control over these uh, points and this data, I can start to control that final geometry of what's made. So when I bring back in my object, you can see I can start to alter the object. And this is, <laughs> this is an example showing everything in the script, which is probably not what we want. Uh, but as we go in there and start to control, you can display off most of it. You can see that I can start to play with that form. The line work is what I baked one iteration, and I'm leaving it in there because as I start to change the data uh, in these parameters and setting up their differences, you can see I can actually start to change. Oh, spoke count, I'll do that one. That one's fairly easy to understand. You see on that bottom one. And if I start to play with the geometry, I get some strange bugs in the program and some warping. And you can be extremely creative with this. But my goal is to build geometries that are still watertight, that can be taken to 3D printing, taken to manufacturing. And this is a lot of information. I'm going to leave it at this. I'm super excited to go into this. Uh, I try not to say super and very too much for uh, political reasons. And uh, you can see that Grasshopper is an interface you'll have to come to understand. I'll make some links to some excellent tutorials on that. And uh, Grasshopper is one that will begin some very simple script and hopefully start to generate these uh, geometries. For instance, this piece is an extremely simple uh, weave uh, grasshopper file. And I'm not sure why it's not loading up because it's too excited over in the other file. Um, yeah, this is a weave pattern that's just going on the UV lines that are associated with a mesh uh, sphere. And then it's playing a little bit with rendering. I'm mostly concerned, once again, with the logic and math that's behind the programming that goes into building geometries. After that, if you want to play with camera angle, if you want to play with uh, uh, rendering and finishes, that's fine. And you may find you'll have this way of rotating your studies. I find from Rhino as a modeling program to Grasshopper algorithmic modeling, a need to go in and play with a little bit of physics apps that pushes me towards Houdini, an incredible program, and then jumping into the sense that I need to code more. And I choose Python as that language as well. So I'm going Rhino, Grasshopper, Houdini, Python. Rhino, Grasshopper, Houdini, Python. And I've been doing that for two years, uh, not even two years, probably about a year and a half. And I'm very excited to see how that's kind of uh, changed uh, my life and certainly how I build and how I make all my, all my land. But I think um, there's a future in this. As I physically hit 50 years old in a couple of years, a lot more of this has become more cerebral. 
And for those creative and curious people, these are some of the exercises and programs you might want to try. I'm not here to teach you how to count buttons and do tutorials and follow through those things. I'm going to show you interesting things in a way that my mind wraps around it in a sense that you can go creatively into this and find a digital analog um, uh, union between your own work in any level of design.